Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today I would like to share with you my thoughts on how to play the HMS Acasta, the Tier 5 Royal Navy British Destroyer. Going back to September 2018, when the Royal Navy event appeared on our horizons to launch the British Destroyer line in World of Warships, I was fortunate enough to get the HMS Icarus and HMS Jervis from Royal Navy containers allowing me to get early access to these amazing ships. I've enjoyed them so much I've been making videos on the British DT line ever since and most recently completed the line with the HMS Daring. Over the course of the last few months I've noticed a common thread arising in comments on the forums and Reddit, be that being the difficulties faced by destroyer captains with the line's torpedoes at lower tiers and realise two things. The simple fact I never played the early tiers myself, having gained the tier 6 and tier 7 in containers and simply continued on up the line from there, and how I can help those aspiring to play the British DD line and illustrate just how good these torpedoes actually are and how to stealth torpedo properly and maximise your effectiveness in this Royal Navy DD line. While using a full stealth build, combining both camouflage and concealment expert, HMS Acasta has a protection radius of 6 km and a torpedo range also of 6 km, meaning you will have to get creative to successfully land torpedoes while maintaining the element of surprise without ever being detected by the enemy. The lessons learned playing HMS Acasta will stand you in good stead for the higher tiers, making it increasingly easier to land massive torpedo volleys due to better concealment and increased torpedo range. The key is positioning and learning to utilise the Acasta's great acceleration and manoeuvrability. Both hallmarks of the entire British line. We already have a tier 6 battleship New Mexico under our belt this round, by simply positioning in front while angled away using its forward momentum to just sail into our torpedoes while simply speeding away to avoid detection. The torpedo aiming indicator is a vital tool relaying information about changes in speed and direction of the selected target. Use it to cycle through multiple targets to get a feel for enemy's movements and intentions. While manoeuvring into a parallel course, matching speed and direction, watch carefully for that opportune moment when the enemy turns inwards. Release those fish and wheel away. Make yourself familiar with your torpedo's travel time. In this case it's roughly about 30 seconds. And remember, positioning is everything. Always have a safe path of escape planned, and while doing so, immediately start plotting your next line of attack while your torpedoes reload. The tier 7 cruiser New Orleans goes down as well, both devastated and never aware of any threat until it was too late. So satisfying and so much fun. So let's take a closer look at the HMS Agasta, the tier 5 Royal Navy British destroyer. Take a quick closer look at the main armament. We have four 120mm single turrets, two in the front, two in the back. A range of 11.1 kilometers. We get two X4 torpedo launchers with a reload time of 95 seconds and a range of 6 kilometers. We get a minor AA defense rating of 8. Maneuverability, 35 knots, maximum speed. Very tight turning circle of 540 meters. A very fast rudder shift time of 2.9 seconds. And a detectability range of 6 kilometers. Let's look at the modules. As usual, all premium consumables. 
and the upgrades main armaments modification 1 damage control system 1 aiming systems mod 1 onto the captain skills as you can see currently only have a 10 point captain preventive maintenance last stand survivability expert and concealment expert and I would suggest adrenaline rush basic firing training and then a personal choice between inertia fuse for high explosive shells or radio location purely down to personal play style the choice between these two skills so before we go to the main part of the video a quick reminder I'm uploading content regularly to YouTube, so if you want to keep in touch, just follow the on-screen instructions. After reading up a little on the history of HMS Agasta, it is hard not to recognize her place in history. In June 1940, HMS Agasta, along with HMS Ardent, were escorting the British aircraft carrier HMS Glorious back from the coast of Norway, where they were intercepted and sunk by the German battleships Scharnhorst and Gneisenau. Despite impossible odds and the battle already lost, Acasta kept attacking before being reduced to a smouldering wreck, but not before landing a torpedo hit on Scharnhorst. Surviving crew members of Scharnhorst and Gneisenau couldn't help being impressed by Acasta's and Ardent's valiant attempts to save their mothership. After the battle ended, crews of both German battleships stood to attention on deck to honour the bravery of the British sailors. I recorded this match just before update 0.8.0 .0 and the launch of the CV rework which is still very much in flux. I chose this particular game due to the presence of four aircraft carriers and despite the absence of the newly introduced attack planes with rockets it's still an accurate representation of how games will play out with lots of hostile aircraft overhead, plus how the game actually unfolds in a manner very similar to how Acasta actually met her demise. After initially planning to go and scout the right side, I've recognised a build-up of enemy ships centrally near the channel between the two main islands, so I've repositioned to take up a defensive position to block any advance. Just quickly using the opportunity here to lob some shells over the islands at these ships that are currently plane spotted. Not only does the Casta have powerful short range torpedoes, but these 120mm main armament guns pack a powerful punch and becoming accustomed with their ballistics will serve you well in your progression up through the tiers as the gun calibre remains the same right up to and including the tier 8 lightning. Just continuing to shell the enemy from concealment here. Okay, I've lost target lock and I've become plane detected. Just need to manoeuvre a little bit so I'm not an easy target. Put some rounds down on this enemy battleship. I'm still plane spotted so I'm just going to keep moving and manoeuvring. Undetected again as is the enemy battleship. Just going to slowly reverse here as there is now an Emerald and a V-170 right in front of me around the corner in this channel. So I'm just going to drop some tarps out here. Slowly reverse out so I can instantly pop my smoke when I detect something. There's the enemy Cruiser, just nerd set of torps. I am detected. He opens fire. I quickly going to switch to armor piercing here, as he's showing full broadside. So maneuver forward. Double citadel. Looks like he's actually he has actually run the ground. My torps are looking straight on target. There's a perfect AP volley. Four citadel hits right under his smokestacks and the torps are going to finish him off here and enemy emerald goes down quickly 
It's this defensive scout role that the HMS Acasta simply excels in. The enemy team now seems to be filtering towards the flanks. The Nicholas is also retreating away from the channel. And we've lost our DD on the right side of the map. And it looks like, we yes, we've also lost our Koenig. So now we've become significantly weaker on this flank. I do see two battleships sailing towards the right side. And this looks like a good opportunity to come down and start torpedoing these targets as they come around the corner. Just going to move down using this island cover to get into a position to close the distance and using my torpedo indicator to monitor the direction and speed. I'm just going to put some torps here. Start pulling away. I'm suddenly detected. Enemy V-170 is charged out around the island. He's going to ruin my torpedo attack here, so I'll quickly open fire on him. Set him on fire. He's turning away. Force him off. I do know that these, this first battleship is coming around. There he appears. He has slowed down, of course. I'm just going to pull away and drop detection and reposition. Our right flank now is quite exposed. I'm just... I've just got uh, the friendly Kirov on my left and we're up against the V-170 and two these two battleships. The ARP High, which is effectively the Congo, and the Koenig. And the Kirov is showing full broadside to this enemy battleship. He's not long for this world, I fear. The enemy Koenig seems to be pulling in hard, so I'm going to make a torpedo run on the Koenig while the High pulls away. Now the Acasta does retain the ability to single fire torpedoes, but it's very situational and very difficult to pull off in situations where you can successfully land torpedoes on bow-in targets. Drop two down there. Put the rest of the spread, followed by the final spread, and turn away. Oh, the Skirov is still turning. Full broadside. And I'll quickly get out of his way. He's showing broadside now to both battleships. It's only a matter of time before he goes down. Just gonna pull away. I did manage to keep uh, remain undetected. One on his bow. Side. Our friendly Kirov. As expected, he goes down. Just going to continue to fall back here. We're now up against these two battleships, and there is a destroyer with them somewhere as well. Just going to quickly smoke up here, I think. That's Enemy Koenig did repair that flooding. I'm going to try and just use this opportunity to get some fires on him while his damage control is on cooldown. Hope that RNG is on my side. You can see a lot of the shells are actually shattering. Now we've lost detection. And the enemy Nicholas has just been spotted, about to enter our base. And he is the most direct threat because he is charging our aircraft carriers. I'm going to have to deal with this Nicholas as quickly as possible. And we are now in a dire situation. I'm the only resistance now between four enemy ships that are all rapidly approaching our carriers and our base. Open fire on this Nicholas. First volley is behind him. Get some good hits. I take manage to take out his engine and knock out one of his torpedo tubes. Keep pouring fire on him. Just change his focus from the carriers to me. It's 
So I'm keep maneuvering and keep him under fire. He has repaired his engine and I instantly set him on fire. That was a huge mistake. It's quite possible he wasn't using last stand and he was forced into a situation like that, but that's usually a huge mistake to repair an engine during a gunfight like this. He takes a strike from our aircraft carrier and I managed to finish him off, but I'm also taking fire now from behind. Enemy V-170 is shelling me there as well. Just going to keep manoeuvring. Reposition around to start engaging this guy. He's undetected. Oh, there he is. He's, he was briefly undetected there. Quickly open fire. Once again, keep changing direction ever so slightly to... Actually, I can actually smoke up here some de shells on him. He's pretty low health. I uh, missed there completely. I have lost visual on him and I missed again. I'm a little wary of these two battleships in the rear. It only really takes one of them to land a big volley on me to put me under real pressure. v 170 is in the open again. He has torpedoed. I managed to get a reset on him there but he is fleeing out of his smoke but he is detected he has made a big mistake here by leaving his smoke screen I'm able to continue raining shells on him still getting slight hits on him and we take out the uh, enemy v170 and we've managed to take out two enemy destroyers in quick succession i'm just about to run aground here I've been so focused on eliminating these destroyers, I've ignored the island in front of me. I have dropped detection just in time to avoid the shells from the high and the enemy Koenig. I really love these close quarters destroyer gunfights and the Acasta gives you all the tools to be able to deal with enemy destroyers in fights like this with meaty guns combined with great maneuverability our carrier manages to get a great torpedo strike on the enemy high there I'm just going to put some torps down in front he's definitely repaired that sh sh was surely a flooding quickly smoke up put some f fire on him quickly swap to the Koenig to reset the cap process and change back to the high I get a reset on the Koenig try and set up fire although my torps seem to be right on target yeah enemy high is doomed quick sw swap back to the enemy Koenig indeed enemy high goes down enemy Keep fire on this guy. Use the last remaining seconds of the smoke screen. Get up to speed and get moving. I am detected. I am plane detected here. Not quite sure by what. Oh, there's an enemy spotter plane above me. It must be from the the enemy high that is now still rotating around after it's after it died. I'm rapidly running out of room to manoeuvre here. I hadn't anticipated the enemy spotter plane. I am briefly undetected again. Torpedoes are almost up. Enemy Koenig has turned his guns on the enemy, my friendly battleship that is approaching from the left. So I can just slow down and put one spread in front. His guns are fully focused. On our Miyogi. Enemy carrier manages to get some torpedoes on the enemy Koenig. Just gonna keep him under fire. The game has rapidly swung in our favour now. Managed to get another torp hit. Just gonna keep him under fire. Second spread is already on target. It won't take much to finish him off now. And we take out 
the enemy Koenig and get the Kraken unleashed toward. Uh, suffice it to say, the rest of the game was relatively uneventful. We cap soon after. Quickly going to the results screen. We can see we scored over 93,000 in damage. Kraken unleashed toward. Over 1700 XP for a tier 5 match. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm releasing content on a weekly basis, so if you want to keep in touch, just follow the on-screen instructions. And, till the next time.